If you want to charge your Mach-E or your Lightning on the Tesla supercharger network, you should probably act fast and reserve your adapter today because Ford just opened the reservations for that adapter and it is going to be free for existing Lightning and Mach-E owners. There's also a limited window you should know about. If you order your adapter after June 30th, 2024, then you'll have to pay $230 for the adapter. So if you want the free one, you need to act today. Also, if you're on the fence about maybe buying a Mach-E or a Lightning, if you buy your Mach-E or Lightning today, you'll get the free adapter. But if you buy one after June 30th, then you won't get the free adapter. You'll have to pay for one. Ford hasn't exactly said when the adapters will start shipping, but it's expected to be any moment now. So let's talk about what you need to know before you start supercharging your Ford. The first thing to know is the adapter. This is what it looks like, and you'll notice it does not have any AC charging pins. That's because of what's going on inside the adapter. It's basically a dumb adapter. I don't have access to that adapter, but I have access to the reverse. This is a CCS to Tesla NACS charge adapter. And if I take it apart, you will notice something right away. There's not a lot going on in here. We just have pins. So these are going to be the exact same pins found in the reverse adapter going from one DC charge specification to the other. The only reason that they're shaped so eccentrically here is that the positive and negative pins are flip-flopped in CCS to NACS. So they actually have to cross over one another. But outside of that, if I just pull these pins out of the adapter, with the DC pins removed, you can see there's not a whole lot else going on inside this adapter. It's just three wires, basically. Well, it looks like four wires, but three contacts over to three different contacts. These little nubs here, these are actually thermal switches. So that way, if something overheats inside the adapter, it will automatically tell the charging station to stop charging the battery. That's all that's going on inside the adapter. And that's why if we go back to the Ford adapter, it's missing those AC pins. The way the current CCS standard was designed, the DC pins go basically straight to the battery. There's a relay, of course, in the way so that way you don't shock yourself by touching those pins. And the AC side connects directly to the onboard charger. The key thing here is that the AC side is not designed to reject DC, and the DC side is not designed to reject AC. However, on the NACS connector, it is. So the electronics on board are capable of handling both and determining exactly which device should be used depending on what kind of power you're supplying. So that's why we don't have those pins, and that's why you will still need an adapter like this if you want to go to a destination charger. There are obviously some slimmer ones. This is an older Tesla tap, but that's what's going on. The next thing to know is which superchargers can you use? This kind of surprised me, but uh, Ford describes them as upgraded superchargers, and only 15,000 of the approximately 23,000 or so superchargers will be able to charge your Ford. The difference is that these are the newer V3 superchargers supercharger stations, the 250 kilowatt plus supercharger stations. You'll be able to find compatible Tesla superchargers using the Ford app on your phone or the infotainment system in the Ford. And charging is going to be pretty simple. You can use either the Tesla app, the Ford app, or you can just plug and charge if your Ford account already is set up for that. And you'll be able to see the charging progress in any of those apps that you choose. We don't know exactly how they will interoperate, however. So if you already have plug and charge set up and you plug in, will you be able to see status somehow linked through the Tesla app? My guess is probably not but you'll be able to do it through the Ford app. So there are still going to be some data interoperability issues that will probably have to be worked through, and we'll know more once we can actually get our hands on them. But let's take a look at the charging map. So here is, for instance, the Bay Area, the South Bay, where I am right now. If I click the button, I can see all of the various superchargers that are around. But if I open superchargers open to NACS, if I click that option, you'll notice it is a much smaller number. And that's mainly because those older supercharger station locations with those slower chargers, they're not included. But if I zoom out, you can see it is still a huge number of supercharger locations. And they're also located in some really critical areas where we don't have much uh, CCS charging. So for instance, Santa Cruz and Capitola, they're strangely devoid of Electrify America or EVgo charging locations. And you'll notice that these supercharger locations are also well positioned on major interstates. So if, for instance, you wanted to cross the country, 
it's going to mean we're going to find superchargers to go across some of these locations where you don't have Electrify America. But you'll notice definitely some still uh, some gaps here. So for instance, I-80 there through uh, Cheyenne, etc. Definitely gaps there on the open to other EVs. But if I allow regular superchargers to show up on this list, you'll see it's pretty well covered for Tesla owners. Now, at this point, we don't have a rollout schedule for the remaining third of supercharger stations as to when they're going to be included in the NACS party or when the V4 stations are really going to start coming out in greater numbers. There are some V4 stations that are fully operational now, but we haven't been able to actually test one. Hopefully, Travis will be able to do that soon because he's relatively close to the one up there in Oregon. If you have an electric vehicle from General Motors or Rivian or any of the other companies that have also signed on to access the supercharger network, the process is probably going to be pretty similar to this. We'll see how the Ford rollout goes. I would expect that some car companies may be waiting to see exactly how this launches before they dive right into offering free adapters and the reservation system for them. But expect to see announcements probably from General Motors and Rivian coming up pretty darn soon. In the meantime, be sure and hit that subscribe button. Let us know what you think about this and especially what you think about the fact that V4 stations are not going to be required for charging your NACS vehicle. What that really means is that if you park your Ford Lightning at a supercharger station, you're probably going to be taking up two charging spots that other people could use. Or you're going to have to park at a jaunty angle, which is definitely going to cause some problems and I would assume some complaints from existing Tesla owners. The NACS adapter does not include some sort of long cable to try and lengthen that adapter out. It really is basically the exact reverse of this NACS uh, to CCS or CCS to NACS charge adapter right there. So definitely a consideration to keep in mind. On the other hand, it does mean more immediate access to a larger number of superchargers for existing Ford owners. How this will all pan out, we'll just have to wait and see. But act fast because you don't want to wait until after June 30th to get your adapter because then you're going to have to pay for it. And of course, if you want to find some fun NACS merch like this shirt right here, one plug to rule them all, you can find those on the merch store. There are going to be links down there in the description. And of course, you can always head over to the merch site. I will see all of you next week.